Gardner, compared to last year, did it seem like in this game that there were more receivers open on your first read than usual? Um, I don't know. I think uh, we had a, we had a good game plan. Coach Gruden did a good job calling plays. Our guys ran good routes, and uh, I think we had time to throw the ball. Um, I, mean, I think a lot of times we worked through the progression, and there's a lot you know guys at the back end that you know didn't get tired of you know running routes on the backside, and they they got balls and got rewarded for it. Um, so I'm glad with the effort in our passing game, really. You had you had the second fastest ball out of of all the NFL quarterbacks this past week. Uh, was there a conscious effort to do that, or did it just seem, hey, if a guy's going to get open immediately, I'm going to get the ball to him? Yeah, we were just going to take what they gave us, um, and then our guys made some really good plays after the catch. Um, and as as long as we're going, you know, they, we have that, we're going to take it. Um, you know, that, that's our thing. We're just going to we're not going to force anything. We're going to take what the defense gives us, um, whether that's underneath, over the top, whatever. Uh, this week, it just happened to be um, where it was. Thanks. Thanks, Gene. Let's go over to D-Rock and then Gary Smith. Partner, you know, we talked a little bit about this before, but you have a different persona publicly than you do, obviously, inside the team, um, inside the meeting rooms and locker room and stuff. Do you, you kind of like that sort of dual personality thing, I guess, the way that they view you inside the locker room is more of an accountant, like Doug said, studious, serious. Oh, I, you know, I don't care. I think it's all about, you know, the personal relationships that you build in the building. Um, you know, I think you want everybody to be able to be themselves. And I think everybody, you know, has times when they're a little more playful and mess around and have times when they're serious and locked in. Um, and, you know, with all the stuff I do, this is this is my job. This is, you know, what I've worked for my whole life. And it's not an opportunity to take lightly. Um, I enjoy it, obviously, at times. But, you know, obviously, during uh, times of work, I'm a Make sure I'm doing that as well. Thank you. Thanks, D Rock. Let's go over to Gary and then Cassidy. Yeah, Gardner, uh, can you talk about uh, the message you might, you guys might have sent to defensive coordinators around the league in the creative ways that you're going to be using LaVisca? And are you dying for the day that that one play opens up where he actually throws you a pass? <laughs> yeah, Perry, LaVisca is a great player. Uh, he's one of those guys that we just got to get the ball to and, you know, any way we can, um, you know, is you know really just starting to get into it with the versatility that uh, he brings. Uh, very excited for him. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's a testament to him. You know, being you know studied up and as a rookie, being able to do all these different roles. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for you know what we're going to be doing with him moving forward, for sure. Thanks, bro. All right, let's jump over to Cassidy and then John Reed. Is Lavisca already standing over there? No, he's not here yet. That was cold. Oh, I thought that's what you were looking at. Um, I don't know if you've seen a lot of the assessment of your game on Sunday, you know, near perfect, just one incompletion, you know, lots of, hey, let's pay attention to Gardner Minshew. Now that you've watched the tape, how would you assess it? Uh, I felt good. I thought uh, as offense, we were pretty efficient, um, you know, running the ball. When we run the ball like we do, uh, especially in the first half, it kind of opens everything up. Um, I thought we did a good job limiting mistakes. Uh, mental errors were very low for us as a group. Um, and our guys called the ball and ran with it well. So, um, you know, pretty pretty pleased. I think there's obviously, you know, every time you go back and watch, there's things you can improve on. Um, and this is, you know, there's no, no difference here. And then as going back, going backwards a little bit in the offseason, as training camp went on, from what you saw going against him, how did you see Miles sort of evolve back into that outside linebacker role? What uh, strides did he make and, you know, as he got ready for the season? Yeah, Miles is a guy ever since I've gotten here, you know, you realize when he's out on the field, he's different. Uh, he moves so well, so fluid uh, for a linebacker. And I think, I think it also helps him having Joe out there. I think those two work really well together. Um, and I'm excited for both of them as they lead kind of the defense. Um, both of them are really good players. Miles, you know, Miles played incredible, and uh, he's really grown as a leader. Uh, as a leader too. Thank you. Thanks, Cassidy. Let's go over to John Reed and then Mia. Cassidy yeah, so kind of asked my question a little bit, but Garner, can can you just speak about you know, as so much goes into a quarterback going into the second season, and 
always the talk about they got to show the jump. And I think you discussed that a little bit, but what is your approach? Is it just week to week? And, you know, I'm, I'm surely that the Titans are not going to show what the um, Colts did, but what what is your approach to that second year and sh- showing what you did this past week? I mean, you look like you, you, you worked on everything and everything showed 19 out of 20, but uh, what is your approach to that? Yeah, I think your approach uh, never really changes. Um, You know, ever since I got here, I was working to try to be the best quarterback I can be, the best quarterback I can be for this team. Um, And that's no different. Um, I think you learn things along the way, and you kind of add those kind of to the tool bag. Um, But, you know, you can only win one game a week. That's what we're focused on. Uh, You know, I think when you start looking at things holistically, like as, you know, year by year, you kind of get lost in the mix. I think most importantly, it's, you know, one one game at a time, one play at a time uh, is what's going to serve you best. What do you expect from the Titans as far as coverages? And I know they disguise a lot, blitz a lot. What, what are you anticipating Sunday from them? Yeah, they mix. They do a good job mixing things up. Um, Coach Vrabel does a very good job coaching those guys. Uh, on the back end, they got some, you know, veteran guys that are very – uh, savvy and they can you know change looks you know with Bayard and then uh, the two corners Butler and uh, Joseph they're all guys that have played a lot of ball and they can move around um, and do different things and uh, they're, they're definitely a challenge and um, one I think we're excited for. Thanks John all right let's go over to Mia and then Hayes and then Mark Long. Hey Gardner, uh, the Jags haven't won in Nashville since 2013. Nissan Stadium has been a bit of a house of horrors. Um, I know you have never actually played there. Can you put a finger on what it is, wh- why that's happened? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think you know you always kind of get these streaks and things, and people try to correlate things year after year. But I think in reality, every every year is a new year. Every week's a new week. Um, you know. I think a lot of times these trends are more superficial than like anything actually, um, you know, tangible. Uh, I think it's it's a challenge that we're looking forward to. Uh, you know, we obviously don't want any streaks like that, um, but it's something we're we're all looking forward to. And like I said, you I know you didn't play last year when the team did go to Nashville. But what do you remember most uh, from that? meeting at home when you face that Titans defense that maybe you can carry over to this year? Yeah, no, they were, um, you know, very similarly built last year. You know, a lot of veteran guys that can disguise looks, move things around on you, very disciplined. Uh, and I think there's a, a lot of the same um, that you saw week one. Um, and then, I mean, the second time we played them, they were they were just very hot. You know, they got, they got on a roll. They were playing really good, playing with a lot of confidence, doing that same stuff we did, we talked about. Um, and they're they're playing really good, and I think they're expecting to carry that over. Um, and they're they're going to be a very good team. One last quick thing: Jay said he got one hour of sleep allegedly because of looking at all the blitz packages from the Titans. Have you been able to sleep the last two nights? Yeah, I've slept a little bit better than him. Um, you know, we're going to put the work in, uh, but I'm I'm going to need my sleep too. Thanks, Gardner. Thanks, Mia. All right, let's go to Hayes and then Mark Long. Maybe. Hey, is you there? Doesn't look like hey. Let's go with Mark. Mark, right. are you there? Yeah. Yeah, just doubling back up on the streaks and things you were talking about. Doug's theme this year seems to be, you know, we're not looking back. How important is that for maybe a really young team and and especially this week, like you said, you know, a team that hasn't won up there in a, in a while. Yeah, I mean, I think you can only focus on what's in front of you. Um, I think you learn from the past and use the things that, um, you know, have happened to you. But in reality, I mean, we have a ton of guys this year on this 53 that have never played up there, that have never been with us when we've gone to play. Um, so it's a new experience. It's a new team bring it up, um, you know, but it's a lot of it's the same, the same challenges that they present. You know, they play really well in that building. They play with a lot of confidence. Older guys that, you know, mix things up well, and, and they're very talented. So it's it's definitely a unique challenge. And then secondly, did you did you talk to anybody who played, anybody else around the league who played without fans at all to get a, 
to maybe get an idea or feel for what that's going to be like this week? Uh, no, not really. Um, you know, we're, we're preparing for it. Um, I mean, we had a scrimmage. I guess that'll be kind of similar. Um, we also practiced today. It'll kind of be similar. So uh, we're, we're excited for it. We obviously wish fans were there. Uh, makes it more fun, I'm, I'm assuming. But, you know, we're, we're focused on the task, task at hand, and uh, hopefully we'll be ready for it. Thanks, Mark. All right, we've only got time for about one more, so we're going to go to John Shipley. Apologies, we can't get to everybody. Hey, Gardner. Uh, just, you know, seeing what, what there is on tape, uh, Kevin Bayard has a reputation as one of the league's better safeties. What can you just say about him and kind of how aware you have to be of where he is on the field? Yeah, he's so good, man. He's, he's, you know, like you said, one of the best safeties in the league. Um, you know, he can play well in the box. He can play well deep. Uh, he mixes up looks. He's savvy. Um, he has a nose for the ball. Uh, so you, you definitely have to have an idea where he is. He's, he's a good player, and he's, um, you know, a challenge that, that we're looking forward to. Thanks, Gordon. Yep.